but there's again there, there's been a slight delay. So folks, it's already close to a, a little bit past eleven. We're gonna uh, afford them that the lunch hour period. So we'll be back at about two o'clock this afternoon. So we're gonna recess until two o'clock. Esteemed speaker, to ask the first question of the day, Speaker Forbes. Uh, I noticed that the way you have this set up, you've got a uh, 5%, 10%, 15% deappropriation level. But is it based, is your baseline, your first column, the uh, appropriation level as it exists now or the appropriation level as it would exist if it took the 2.5% cut that mm -hmm. the, bu the budget bill proposes? It's based on the existing budget law, sir. Wouldn't it be more useful to the body if what we had was a 7.5% uh, deappropriation level for those areas where the governor is proposing a 2.5% cut? Uh, BBMR run, ran the scenario based on the existing law, and if we were to deappropriate, it would be based on what the appropriation levels are as they exist today. See, the only unfortunate thing is it makes it very hard for us then to take these numbers and plug them into the existing bill. It, it, it's going to require another calculation. We can run that scenario if that's what you wish. Well, it's just, it, you know, if, if the decision of the body is to go ahead and let a 5% deappropriation stand, in other words, not to affect the law that is in the, written now, and there's going to be a 2.5% reduction in that agency's budget, then that would, in fact, be the number that we need, right? If that's the desire of the body, we can yeah. run that scenario. And then I, I, I suggest that the, at some point here, you might want to jump on the phone and have somebody do that and give us a 5% plus a 2.5% for those agencies that, that didn't turn in their stuff. And so then, just so I'm clear, we would first take the 2.5%, get that level, and then apply the 5%? No, actually, go the other way. I think you'd take the 5% off of the no. existing budget now and then reduce 2.5% from that. Okay. That seems more logical to me because we haven't yet passed the 2.5% cut. Wouldn't that make sense to everybody? Or would you rather go the other way? Well, I think the uh, the question that still needs to um, to be answered is, John, uh, Mr. De La Rosa, is that when you say based upon the current law, if you read the current law, the way you could read that, it says that 5% from the total appropriation for each violation. So I if they didn't put it on the website, that's 5%. If they didn't file the report, that's 5%. And then if they didn't transmit, it's another five. Well, I presume that's, that's why they did a five, 10, and a 15. Well, yeah. but I think all we need to know is what, what would be better, to give us a five, 10, 15, and then a 2.5 as proposed yeah. by the governor, or would it be better to do 2.5 first, then do a five, 10, and 15? Yeah. But then they also need to tell us which of these agencies get the 10 because they didn't fill two of the requirements? Certainly. No, we'll, we'll, if that's yeah. the way we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get it. Yeah. If I, that's the way it's read, I'm not sure, yeah. Yeah. but that's no, we'll, the way we'll, I kind of read it. We can cr that bridge we can cross when we're going to cross you, it. Uh, I'm going to ask an even more fundamental question as a chairman. Now that the whole landscape has changed, we have a Bill 74 that's presented upon us. It may be interesting whether the administration would like to present Bill 74 at all to us. Well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, know, but fundamental I think question. Let's, let's make it simpler. You know. The bill proposes a 2.5% cut. The law requires a 5% cut. If these were to be taken in tandem, I think the only decision that needs to be made is, do we take the 2.5% out first and, and then the subsequent cuts, if that's what we want to do, or do we take the subsequent cuts and then take out the 2.5? And, you know, Mr. Chairman, although this is totally not the way it's done in the Guam legislature, I think if we just walk, look around the room and say, which number do you guys want? Do you want the 2.5 taken out first, or do you want the 2.5 taken out last? Last? All right, the consensus seems to be last. So what it, what, what it basically means is you take this, uh, oh, this is easier then, 5, 10, and 15, what you got in the columns, mm -hmm. and then take an additional 2.5% off, and then, then we'll have it. That's it. That's all I wanted. You know, I, I'm going to, Senator Guthards, you had the microphone last. Okay. Thank you, Senator Guthard. So Senator Judy Wanpat. Thank you. I, I think this is, uh, I, I know what Judy wants to do, but maybe this one is just specifically clarifying, you know, what it is that we have here. But I think the, the one very important question I think that has to be answered here is uh, that the penalty clause, the 5% uh, deduction, whether it's 5% for each one of those or is it 5% for all three? And, you but, know, so. No, we can discuss that, but I think we need to have, because he's given us every scenario. 
So we have a scenario where it multiplies, well, we have well, a scenario where it doesn't. That's one. First, the second thing you write, what I wanted I, I, to ask. Senator, I, I think she ha he has an answer to your question. Okay, but, but the second question, too, that then you can answer with this, is that when you gave us this scenario, is this scenario then basically to say that, you know, if because of the, the, the loan, if that doesn't go through, then we're looking at a 5%. If it's still not enough, then we're going to go a 10. If still no, that's not no. enough, are we going to go a 15? No, That's no. what I'm trying to find out. Can I okay. ask John to please explain then the spreadsheet that you've given us and whether that whether it's your interpretation or the administration's interpretation that that 5% is for all three or is it five for each one of them? You know, I don't have a problem with that. That's the discussion that you guys want to have. But I, what I would like is because I can't, I'm getting, I'm getting tired of waiting on numbers. If it's possible, could someone just pick up a phone and ask someone at BBMR while we're discussing it to generate a 2.5% cut? That's all I'm asking. So that in the course of all the conversation, that number is being generated. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, so you take each of those columns, 5, 10, and 15, and do 2.5. That's all I'm asking. Just so the number's available to us, so we're yeah. not waiting on it anymore. I'm going to call for a one-minute recess just so some of these uh, senators can discuss this with the representative of the administration so we can move in an orderly basis. We'll take a, well, not one month, a couple of minutes recess. Uh, apparently, we're still waiting for the, um, the faxing of the amount, but, you know, uh, I, think, I think we can start this way. Clearly, the law as it exists right now, says that agencies and departments which did not uh, report as required under the law will suffer a 5% deappropriation for each failure. So if there is a failure to transmit, that's 5%. If there's a failure to post on the website electronically, that's 5%. I mean, it's pretty clear that's what the law says to me. For a moment, let's dispense with whether or not uh, the legislature intends to extract a 15% penalty against some departments for failing to do everything that they're supposed to do under the law. And I want to make it clear that that's the case. The case is that you know, departments are supposed to transmit this information on a timely basis. The penalties are laid out. Um, but let's for a moment forget, the, just, just not discuss, at least I won't discuss, whether or not we, we intend to uh, extract the full, in some cases, 15% penalty from these departments or agencies. I'd like to ask a general question. The law does uh, uh, deduct uh, pursuant to BBMR uh, making a notification of the adjustment in the budget, transmitting such notification to the governor and to the legislature. Subsequent to that step, uh, the deduction shall occur. If that were to occur, would the administration still want us to uh, reduce in this bill the appropriation uh, items uh, by an additional 2.5 percent? Or would you consider, the, let's say just for example, we, we extracted a 5 percent penalty for those agencies and departments that failed to comply. Would that suffice for the administration's purpose or would the administration recommend that we add an additional 2.5 percent cut as is contained in Bill 74? We believe that the 5% would suffice, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so the administration's position would be that if we did, uh, and right now, if we do nothing, that at least 5%, possibly quite a bit more than 5% per department would, would automatically occur. So um, if that were to take place, then you would not want to see additional cuts of 2.5% to those departments or agencies. That's correct. We're, our fear is that it would uh, affect services if we went the additional 2.5% to many of the agencies. Okay. 
Now, in the list that was uh, provided to us earlier, you included pers uh, prospective cuts for all uh, departments and agencies, including those not actually affected by this particular provision. Um, there are departments and agencies that did comply. Uh, according to BBMR, sir, everyone uh, was non-compliant on the staffing pattern uh, reporting requirement. Even though it's not financial, it's listed as one of the compliance issues. Okay. So you're saying every department failed to comply? Yes. Every department and agency, okay. Um, so is it the administration's view right now that, uh, well, let's put it this way. The, the law says that uh, BBM, the next step is for BBMR to, uh, to notify the departments and agencies that their appropriations are going to be affected. Is that something BBMR is going to work on? Yes, sir. They've uh, generated the amounts and uh, they will work on the notification steps. Okay. All right. Uh, do you guys have any feelings about... I, I guess this is a, a broad question, but I'll ask it. Uh, do you have any feelings about whether or not the full, uh, in some cases, 15% uh, cut should be extracted against uh, delinquent agencies? Do you feel it should be less? Would you like them to be forgiven utterly? W what is it you would like? Uh, I can answer this for you, Mr. Speaker. At 15%, it would definitely affect the services of every agency in this government, especially given that we're halfway through the year. So you're not like that, right? Yes. Okay. So you are, would the administration like the legislature to reconsider the multiplier effect of, of having each violation charged an additional 5%? Yes, sir. How does the administration feel at this juncture about, because in its original iteration, it was simply 5%. It was amended to include these multipliers. How would the, um, how would the administration feel about the application of a 5% penalty? Um, we, uh, we actually, um, in, in discussions with some of the, the members of this body, have uh, recognized that it wasn't the intention to cripple any agencies in, in doing this, but was an incentive to comply with the reporting requirements, and uh, we believe that the 5% per filing period would be very sufficient to send that message to the agencies. So you would have no problem with the 5% being extracted? Uh, we prefer 5 to 15, sir. Okay, well, that's, I'm just trying to see what you <laughs> want. Right? So, so if you guys can handle 5%, would you want the 5% to apply to every single department, or are there some departments which you feel either because of the nature of their budget or because of the because of the importance of what they do you know ought to be exempt from that yeah, there are specific agencies that um, for whom uh, the general fund funds over 95 percent of well where where their general funds over 95 percent of the general fund appropriation is personnel mm -hmm. um, I believe the Guam fire department is one of those agencies and so we're concerned uh, about affecting uniform personnel in any way or the operations of safety, health, and education. Okay. Obviously, this is not something that we're going to complete today, but I have a request, homework, for the weekend. Um, could you guys uh, articulate on a sheet of paper those departments and agencies that you feel ought to be, from your perspective, uh, depending upon, you know, whatever criteria you wish to use, such as the importance of the work of the agency, the specifics of their budget, whatever it is, uh, of those departments and agencies you feel the legislature should not cut by 5%, and then presumably the balance will be those that are, it's okay to cut by 5%. Yes, sir. Okay, well, that, 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 that'll take care of that. I know you won't be able to finish that today, but it's just, we want to just know what your feelings are on this, okay? Sure. Uh, I don't know that the body is going to necessarily agree. The body might say, nah, it's 5% for everybody. The body might say, heck with that, it's 10% for everybody. Somehow I doubt it. Uh, but that notwithstanding, I, I, this isn't uh, an offer or anything on my part. I, I just want to have some, some information uh, about how the administration feels about that, and I think that that would be helpful. Um, and, and since you are telling us that you, if you take these cuts, you really don't, um, don't want to ask us to cut an additional 2.5% out of those departments, then 
you know, that, that puts a little bit of closure on the notion of whether or not you are saying 5%, 75%, 7.5% 7 or whatever here, although it still would be nice to see the number. Um, with that understanding, uh, it is possible, uh, clearly, uh, that, you know, some of these numbers may change. that we have in front of us uh, if, uh, if, John, if John's uh, point that every department and agency failed to comply with one report at least, then that would mean that uh, essentially every department's budget would change to some extent. Um, so we can uh, go ahead and proceed, I think, uh, on the basis that uh, once BBMR does do its computations and once the legislature determines whether or not it is going to penalize these people uh, beyond the 5% number, uh, then we'll know what those budget numbers are going to be. Now, when previously, Mr. Chairman, we were dealing with this chapter, we did say that After going through all the sections, we would uh, reopen the door for uh, restorations. There was one outstanding issue, John, that I was hoping would be addressed before we got this far, and that was a full accounting of the funded vacancies, such as they may be in every department and agency. And although some departments and agencies have, in fact, sent to my office uh, lists of those funded vacancies. Not all have. And, you know, I was hoping that even if a department or agency had no un or no funded vacancies, they'd at least say that to us so we understand that that's the case, which kind of makes it very difficult for me to advance uh, motions that I wanted to advance, which was to take those unfunded vacancies and establish some kind of uh, regime that would defund funded vacancies that are likely not to be filled by the end of the fiscal year because it seems uh, foolish, at least, to carry appropriations that are not going to be spent. I mean, the one thing you don't want to do at the end of this is I don't think you want to have big lapses, do you? I mean, it would kind of defeat the whole purpose of this if we go through this exercise and wind up with lapses because uh, positions didn't get filled. Um, if they're not going to be filled, they just had not to be funded until the next time around, maybe. Um, so I don't really know what to do. I'm kind of like in a quandary here. Um, what I think I might do is rethink how I was going to do this and come up with some way of doing it in the miscellaneous section, which is the next session we'll go into, uh, in terms of uh, establishing some kind of um, target. office or whomever uh, meet that target since I just don't have a sufficiency of information to construct the amendment the way I originally wanted to, which was specific to the positions. But we'll work with that. But, but Mr. Chair, I think we're at the juncture now as we await the uh, full impact of these cuts where we're going to have any motions to restore and I see that there are uh, uh, amendments that are winding up on the desk. That that's the next place we should go and then finish up this chapter so we can get into miscellaneous. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry. You were talking uh, far enough from your microphone that I can't get a clear, I, I don't hear you. Uh, what, was, what was the comment? The comment was, um, I think uh, you need to have your hearing checked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the comment was this. The comment was, um, you know, whatever, we're, whatever happens with this 5, 10, 15% business, mm -hmm. That can all happen subsequent to motions to restore, which is the next series of motions mm -hmm. that theoretically we're supposed to entertain based mm -hmm. upon the rule that was established at the beginning of the chapter. Mm -hmm. So uh, since the administration has indicated that uh, the 5% cuts they can handle, or at least they'll prefer that to some of the others, uh, they are going to look, and what I'm hearing is that over the weekend they will try and come up with... Uh, a series of, um, of uh, restorations of their own in mm -hmm. cases where they feel that 5% would be draconian for the particulars of that agency or department, either based on the, the specifics of that agency budget 
or based on the importance that they place on the work of that agency or whatever the reason may be. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something presumably we can get Monday, right? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this would seem to me an appropriate time, uh, appropriate time, Mr. Chair, to uh, complete Chapter 4 mm -hmm. by entertaining the motions that other members have already placed on the desks. Mm -hmm. And finish up Chapter 4 to the best yeah. of our ability until the administration is able to yeah. provide us with what they the, need to the, provide us with. I'm going to make a comment here because I'm, I'm deliberating on this. It's it, it's an interesting scenario because... Well, no, it's, it's actually what we agreed to earlier. So. Yeah, but again, if you take a look at Bill 74, you have a bill where there is a budget that is to be uh, revised. And with this revised budget... It deals with an appropriation, and with that appropriation, then a deappropriation. Uh, and and the only, only reason I'm, thi I'm, I'm, I'm thinking out aloud here, as I move forward in the deliberation, you have an appropriation on, that is at this point based on 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 a um, on a situation of depropriation, where the environment has changed. Well, yes and no. My, my, I've been thinking about it myself, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. and, and actually there are some administrative steps under the law mm -hmm. that still need to be taken prior to the deappropriation taking place. Namely, BBMR has to complete mm -hmm. this notification process and tell everybody that they're they're getting deappropriated under the law. So the point is, is that BBMR will be providing these things uh, whether we do anything or not. It is interesting to note on the, the, the law that there is a 30-day grace period, and with that 30-day grace period, it is incumbent on the administration to to give notice uh, 15 days. Understood. And so, in reality, you know, the, those days have come and gone. In, for whatever reason, yeah. there, there, there still is there still is a notification. And irrespect and irrespective if notice has, has been given, and I'm just state, quoting the law, irrespective of notice has been given in regards to that 15 day grace period, uh, in any event there will be an automatic deappropriation. I'm just going to call for a, a, a few minutes it, recess. It, because Mr. Speaker, I because, mean, Mr. Because Chairman, actually, no, I don't think it's a good idea that we call for yeah, recess. Okay, then, I, I, then, then, then I, again, the, chair, the chairman is, is, is uh, looking at your request. So you, your request is I'm not to requesting move anything that, other than we just continue with the way we've, we've, we've uh, already set this up. Yeah. We, we, we established a rule that if any member wanted to make motions for restorations, they could. Okay. And, and, and there's no reason, even if there is going to be an automatic deappropriation, that is going to occur automatically whether we do anything or not. Actually, this again, because this bill has not, is not law, yeah. the only thing is now we have to understand, and, and I think every mem member of this body has to, to recognize that the numbers that have been provided based on the original appropriation are not one in, at this point the numbers that are in actual, actuality. Because it, there is supposed to be an automatic deappropriation. So th this is an exercise. The rules have been set. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with those rules, the chair will move along with, with again, the, the amendments to, to restore. Uh, and, um, and do recall that when and, and And also, I, I acknowledge, I think everyone in the body must acknowledge uh, the fact that the, though we're, we're moving along with this particular bill, the actual... Uh, appropriations to agencies are, are are not identical to what is in the bill. Right, but and remember as well that the administration apparently on Monday is going to come to us and say, well, this is what we'd like. We'd like it to be, if I understand you correctly, yeah. only a 5% cut, and we'd like to see some <laughs> leniency granted to the following agencies, okay. which is a proposal they'll sure. make. So I'm just yeah. saying that the administration, like the members here, uh, yeah. can propose whatever they wish to propose, okay? I, I think this probably is one of the... Uh, one of the is this probably the first time anything has probably occurred like this. Certainly, but that's really not <laughs> okay. Anyway, with that, uh, the chair will 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 move along again based on the rules that have been established. So, uh, I do recall that we were in section two. I, I, we were in chapter three, section two, the Guam Community College. Mr. Chairman, just just point of point of order. Sure. Didn't 
Then uh, Senator Guthers. And then to, Senator Guthers. Actually, then time? Senator could, Guthers. Could I, could I make a recommendation? Sure. Rather than go department by department sure. by department again, I don't think, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not certain that every single department there's going to be a motion to restore. Yeah. Why don't we just go motion by motion by motion? In other words, if Senator Guthert has a bunch of motions she yeah. wants to make for restoration, she has a floor, she makes them. Yeah. And then the Senator Pangolinan, who I see has some motions here. Well, you know, the, rather the, than going back over every department the, the, again. The issue I, I have with that is we may be going back and forth within the bill. And, and if, you know, obviously every Does senator here. Um, at this juncture? It, at this juncture. It, I don't think I, it matters. I would much rather we have... Um, we have section, how many sections? Section it's, just, it's too many sections to go section by section, Mr. Chairman. I think we should just entertain those motions that are produced until people until people use up their time, and that's it. Oh, th anyway, th there's a recommendation here. If there's no objection by the... Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman? Is there an objection? Do you have an objection to the, to, to the recommendation? If there, if no, I, Senator I just, Shimizu, if there's no objection, I will go along with the recommendations by the chair. Okay, I'm just, can I just speak on, 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 on that? Yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, please. do I have to object to speak okay, to that? Okay, please. Right? Just okay. A, Senator Shimizu, continue. Thank you. Early on, on, you know, we agreed on your recommendation uh, to go, you know, line by line. We wanted to make motions at that time. Yeah. And now you want to change the rules of engagement? No, 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 no. Actually, saying? I'm trying to make it more convenient no, for you, No, I'm just trying to say we're going to change it now. Right? No, we're not changing anything. <laughs> what I'm saying is we went through the whole thing line by line for the purposes of entertaining any motions to cut further. Now we are at the point yes. where people have motions to restore. And what I'm saying is rather than go line by line by line to do that, you know, different people have different motions they want to make. I think it'd be more expedient for, for you guys and, and more convenient for you guys if you could just make all your motions. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, again, before I object or not object, I just want to clear in my mind the rules of engagement that you're proposing now mm -hmm. in light of the fact that okay. we recessed again earlier mm -hmm. relative to the, um, the penalty that uh, have come in gone the deadline mm -hmm. and the impact that would have on the uh, the uh, budget and then uh, earlier you had mentioned the fact that to look at that and then look at the uh, two percent on top of that and I was I was heading in that direction and, yeah. and I just felt a little derailed now to well unfortunately we don't I have we don't have all that information uh, the uh, the administration. Please, please continue, Senator Shimizu, Speaker. I, I let him continue, please, and then and then I'll. I'll yeah, I, I I just felt that we were going in that direction was to be able to. Mm. Um, we got the uh, I guess before me was the uh, uh, public auditor's uh, report that reflected yeah. um, who complied and who didn't comply, yeah. and then during the you know the discourse they were also talking about the possibility of. Um, what's that? Uh, considering mm -hmm. maybe um, paroling or you know forgiving yeah. or yeah. so forth. So I'm I'm still yeah. not clear, and yeah. I, I I like okay. the process that you have. So tell you what, the chairman. Uh, what I think, uh, obviously, the rules haven't changed because we had we were now in the portion where there's motions to to uh, reconsider the okay. deappropriations. The only question now was in the order. What I'm going to tell you what I'm going to set the rule here. Okay. We're going to allow on the recommendations uh, by, by, by the speaker. But once an amendment has been made, we're not gonna reconsider once we, if, if, if there's been an amendment uh, by a certain uh, senator to proffer to reinstate section one, and once we've dealt with section one, if another senator comes around and starts going into section one again, that would not be entertained. Okay, I, I, but we're we're talking about resting unless, of course, there's a there's there is a, a substantial difference in the amendment. But but right now we're looking at restoration of of um, of appropriations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, with that, yeah, again, yeah. without any substantial changes. But with that, I will allow for the uh, for the movement on um, on the reappropriations based on uh, the original appropriation law. And with that, uh, Senator Guthards, you're the first.
Uh, Mr. Chairman, could, may I ask a question before I present my motion? Sure. Thank you. Um, because I don't have that uh, uh, previous experience at the legislature, and we have this sort of we have sort of have this new development now with this uh, the mandated five percent reduction to departments and agencies that do not comply with the reporting requirements mm -hmm. of the law. My understanding was the deadline for the agencies to submit those reports were in December. Is that correct? Yeah, at the end of the uh, the first quarter is December, December, okay. end of December. Okay. What entity is responsible for inventorying whether or not the reports are submitted? What in, what what entity is responsible for inventorying whether where the whether or not the reports are submitted? No, well, obviously BBMR has a role in this, and the public auditor has a role. So every entity, it, it's respons it is responsible for providing a quarterly report. It's given uh, actually 45 days, 30 days upon the end of the, uh, of the quarter, plus a 15-day uh, grace period, where with after that 30th day, there should have been no notice made by BBMR uh, to advise this um, entity that they were uh, in non-compliance. But irrespective if BBMR um, sent them notice yeah. at the 45 day, they are, there is an automatic deappropriation and that automatic deappropriation will be triggered uh, by BBMR. Okay, now <clears throat> as of this moment, Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that uh, BBMR has not executed those deappropriations. As of this moment, mm -hmm. they have not executed those yet, mm -hmm. have they? BBMR executed the deappropriations? I don't know. They've just supplied us with a list stating that there is a deappropriation, but I, I guess obviously... They, they waited, in other words. Yeah. They waited. Yeah. My, my, my point is that it's not... I do want to take note that the public auditor did send a report, has sent a report over the past several days. Okay, but it's yeah. now April. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. and if we would have had this information, let's say by the end of January, early February, then we would have had better guidance over the last three and a half weeks. We've gone mm -hmm. over these departments and agencies mm -hmm. discussing a potential 2.5% cut for the last three and a half weeks yeah. when we could have been discussing something else. Had we had that information, uh, and that reporting in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Sure. And so I personally am very disappointed in the uh, offices of the government that are responsible for tracking and inventorying these reports. And uh, I think this law is a very important law that requires these reports because the public should have full disclosure in all government expenditures and how monies are used that are authorized by this legislature to the departments and agencies of the government. <laughs> uh, one issue though that came up today that I think your office may wanna look into is I understand that in some of these agencies that did not submit reports, they are invoking what they believe <laughs> to be a non-legal requirement to do so. That because of their particular status, mm -hmm. they are not required to observe this law and mm -hmm. That does concern me. I think mm -hmm. every department and agency, regardless of whether they're a line department, autonomous agency, a corporation, or whatever else, they should re be reporting mm -hmm. uh, how their funds are used and spent. And mm -hmm. I just wondered if you had any any guidance on that, legal guidance on whether these entities mm -hmm. that are claiming this are legally in the right. I totally agree with you. And the, 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 the committee will be moving forward to ensure okay. that there is full compliance to the law. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continue, I, I, again, yes. you, you have the microphone. Thank you, yes. Now, I'm ready to uh, make a, a motion for a restoration. And with the new development, uh, as uh, our good speaker. You know, I'll, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to, to, yeah. to this point. Yeah. Yes. Can I call a point of information, inquiry, or. Sure. Point of I am really not sure as to what was the rules that were established uh, 
uh, again to to go to the committee of the whole. I what I understand, yeah, or is that we're going to you know the motion to restore everything that we have already gone through. Mm -hmm. It's not true. And That's no, correct. That's the rules. That's, and are uh, are we depending now upon the the appropriation of around twenty five million dollars that was uh, stated earlier? Or you know by the OPA that uh, this uh, there yeah. have been they have been already yeah. deappropriated. Oh, oh senior, sen yeah, senior senator, I'm going to clarify here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Yeah. That's the reason why. Before we go forward on this, obviously because the rules the rules were set, the environment has changed dramatically over the past few weeks, and because of of the public auditor's report and of compliance of law, there is there is obviously a deappropriation occurring. But currently, we have bill number 74, which is, is not law. It's a bill. And obviously, though the numbers in bill 74 reflect an appropriation passed in either 28-149 or 28-150. And with that, the administration has made uh, revisions on the budget law on a 2.5% cut. Now, obviously, this bill 74 is not reflective of the reality of today. But because of the rules that were set in regards to that we would be going through on first every section on additional cuts, and then after that, there would be a movement towards restor uh, for, for the senators the opportunity to move in all those sections if there were to be any type of uh, amendment for a restoration of, of those appropriations originally uh, enacted in 28-149 and 28-150. Uh, that was the rules that were sent. But obviously, uh, to my colleagues, uh, what w the, the rules that we have set in motion uh, is are particular to Bill Number 74. It is my you know, it takes it doesn't take much common sense to dictate that whatever moves that we make now on Bill 74 and whatever restorations. And if there are restorations in totality and full to the original appropriation, it does not change the fact that uh, there is currently the law is in place where there is a um, a, uh, a deappropriation that occurs automatically without any legislative uh, uh, action. Now, as we move along and we go through all sections for restoration of uh, uh, and if. If everyone gets a restoration, and that's if that's the sentiment of the body, and every section we go through here, the money goes back. We've gone through that section and we made those changes, but that is obviously uh, not the reality of the day. And until we pass a a uh, a bill 74, and if we pass it, and until it's signed by the governor, uh, the actual the the actual case of the matter is there is a current environment in which there is a deappropriate, an automatic deappropriation occurring. I hope that explains okay. it. Let me, let me just uh, <laughs> continue to, to sort of clarify. Okay, according to the OPA, there, there are, I think, 11 departments and a agencies that have complied with, the, uh, with public law 28-149 and 28-150, okay. The other, the balance of the 56 entities altogether then, mm -hmm. uh, have been already deappropriated 5%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, the, the bill that we have in front of us is Bill 74. Does it have the original uh, amount uh, that were appropriated during the you know, during the budget last year in 28, you know, 28, uh, 149 and 28, that's 150? Or is it? It is. According to John, no. Oh. I'm sorry, Senator. Uh, many of the appropriations reflected in there are the upward adjustments and appropriations for those executive line agencies that were not directly appropriated. So it will not reflect what was ref what was the actual appropriation levels in either in specifically 28150. For example, the Department of Administration was lumped into the $5.7 million appropriation plus the $25 million elapsed authority and the $8 million refinanced uh, bond authority. 
Uh, and so the actual appropriation for those agencies is 5.7. So uh, there's going to be a lot of confusion in this thing as we start going uh, back for restoration <laughs> because um, there will probably be a lot of departments that will be closed by then. Actually, should have been based on the appropriation. That's my, my, my concern in terms of the rules that we have right now. Um, I think that we should have sort of like a guidance in terms of the impact of the uh, of the uh, you know the the restriction according to the uh, public law 28-149 and 28-150 that they appropriated five percent per department that did not um, comply with with the statute itself. You know. That's we have it right now. And so there'll yeah. be a, either we restore everything. Yeah. A actually, the complication here, uh, Mr. Speaker, Chair, um, is that most of all the sections here are on the public law 2849 and 150. The problem is on section, on section 14, which was the appropriation to the executive branch, which was lump sum, uh, and which is in the direction of the governor. This is where a lot of adjustments have occurred, correct, John? That is where there is, there is, there is uh, obviously the administration has made substan substantive changes. Uh, there are many here, and I'm, uh, if you start, if, uh, aside, from, aside from section 14, many, if not all, of the sections are Actual the uh, actual appropriations levels based on 21, 28, 149 and 21, 28, I, I think. Point, point of information, yeah. Mr. Chair. They're not really appropriation specific to those departments and agencies because in 21, uh, 49, I mean 28, 149 and 28, 150, mm -hmm. the agencies were not, there were no set amount. It was a lump sum appropriation. Oh, yeah. I mentioned that section 14, yeah. ex excluding most of the sections here, were 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 categorized in and and uh, separated with 28149 and 28150. But you're correct. There is in no section 14, there was a lump. There that's was, correct. and that's why that, that's why we're 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 in an issue here, is because, I mean, if we we're to if we were to move in the direction that the rules have been set forth when we started committee as a whole, for much of these sections we can do it. Yeah. But but obviously, what you stated in section 14 in that lump sum budget, we're going to have some issues. Right. And and so the I'm looking to recommendations from so the body. So any here. any restoration really is, does not deal with the appropriations to those agencies. It deals with the new proposed appropriation mm -hmm. levels contained in Bill 58, I mean 74. Yeah. So it does not, uh, it really does not address the uh, 21, 149 and 150 because there were no specific appropriation levels In the lump sum budget. That's correct. Correct, correct. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. We're working with Bill 74. We are working with Bill 74. We are in Chapter 3, and we are now moving on, on the, based on the rules that have been set, we are moving on the particular sections and the revisions proposed on those sections uh, on 28-149 and 28-150, and the chair is looking towards the members of the body for any types of motions or amendments <laughs> and I know I was in Senator Guthard's, but then there was a point of information by uh, by Senate uh, Senior Senator Impinko. Uh, but we're still in Senator Guthard's. Are you looking, Senator Respicio? I just have a, a point of information. Sure. Um, and you can rule me um, out of order any time, uh, Mr. Chairman, because I'm going to be treading very um, mm -hmm. cautiously here. Uh, I did a, um, my office has done a uh, spreadsheet mm -hmm. uh, which um, determines where we were at with Bill 74, uh, taking all the um, uh, exemptions that were made to the judiciary and to the library. Mm -hmm. And so it's a snapshot of where we're at right now, Mr. Chairman, the, the cash uh, shortfall 
is uh, thirty-seven point one million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's if we do nothing at this point. Mm -hmm. But in light of the um, five percent uh, deappropriations, and when Speaker Forbes asked for that information uh, while we were waiting, uh, I accessed the same uh, spreadsheet, and I had a column for a, what would a five percent appropriation reduction mean? Yeah. What would a ten percent appropriation reduction mean? And those levels uh, after that, a uh, five percent appropriation reduction. Uh, not counting those agencies that complied uh, would leave us at um, it's about it's it's about all said mr. chairman it's uh, 21 uh, million dollars mm -hmm. and then uh, I didn't get the chance to um, to be specific about the, all the uh, lump sum appropriation to all the line agency, mm -hmm. but I can give you an aggregate um, total, mm -hmm. which if you take 5% of the $45 million for those agencies is about $2.2 .2 million. So so that impact for us right now would be a $23.3 million total. Mm -hmm. That's what that 5% that penalty uh, would mean if we went with um, and take away all the uh, agencies that complied. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. We're sure. either at a $37.1 million cash um, shortfall, or if we were to adopt the, um, actually not adopt, but if we were just to, to let them follow the law, mm -hmm. our current cash shortfall is $17.5 million, mm -hmm. $17.6 million, okay. inclusive of that 5% uh, uh, impact. Okay. So that's Th thank you for at. the point of information. Thank I you, know Mr. that the, the thing is that, that we, we moved on these rules and that's why the chair, again, the recommendation by the speaker, it's obviously there's a scenario, and, 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 and we, we, are, we, are, we are aware of that scenario. Thank you very much. It's just, again, now that's why, because of the situation we're in, and obviously there is a shortfall, and this must all be taken into consideration because as we move along and, and, and we go through these sections and where the rules were set, that uh, there's going to be a motion for and uh, if we go to particular sec uh, senator and he raises her his or her hand and and um, uh, motions to reinstate or an appropriation level based on the old uh, on the old budget law, uh, and it's ratified, obviously it causes an imbalance. It's it's obvious. So uh, we understand that. And um, and again, I'm looking towards the members of the body to as we move forward to move forward responsibly and. Uh, and with great care. But with that, Senator, thank you very much, Senator Respicio. Senator Judy Guthards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, taking into consideration the, uh, the revised approach that we're going to be using now hmm. to deal with uh, Chapter 3 and also the, uh, I, uh, the presentation made by our speaker on possible methodologies or amendments that could be made. Uh, I would like to uh, move mm -hmm. to restore 95% of the proposed cut to the University of Guam budget. Well, no, the two, of the 2.5% cut. Yes, yes, 95% of the 2.5% cut to the University of Guam budget. <laughs> Say that again. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I would like to move to yeah. restore 95% of the 2.5% cut to the University of Guam budget. Just a point of order, Mr. Speaker. If, if, rather than make those kind of general, I think if that's the appropriation one, we, we should really write that down and that's quantify the number. Tell you what, if you're going to make that motion, I'm going to call. Would you care to write? Is it, are you going to write that down? I can write it down. Write R it down. Rory, can you write it down? <laughs> can you also calculate the 95% yeah, of 2.5%? And let's you just get a dollar amount. So now you know. do. But by the way, folks. Thank you. We. Okay, that's a different amendment. <laughs> I'm going to take a, a minute recess to uh, have that amendment written down.
Senator Guthridge, first off, the Senator proposing the amendment in this uh, piece of paper is RJR. Oh, well, can we please correct that, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman? It should be yours truly. I used his uh, computer for both of these. I'm sorry? It was done on his computer, so. Secondarily, the uh, amendment uh, is an exact, carbon, ex exact copy of an amendment that already failed. Weren't you doing 95%? My understanding, Mr. Speaker, is that we, they ruled me out of order when I did that. Uh, you'd be, I think, out of order if you tried to do exactly the same amendment that failed, but you'd be within order. Sure. Well, Mr. Speaker, correct me if I'm wrong, but at that time, she, her, when she made the motion, she was out of order as it relates to the rules of engagement that we had because she was making those motions. I'm sorry. When, no, wait, excuse me, sir. Let me finish. She was making those motions, and we have not finished all of the uh, the agency. Or did we finish all of the agency? Early on, there was a motion to restore UOG's cut right at the very beginning. UOG was one of the first uh, agencies we addressed. That motion did not carry. Other motions did carry, but University of Guam did not. So a full restoration of UOG would be an exact copy right. of the motion that had failed. Can I so can she ask, notwithstanding the House rule, no. to reconsider? I'm just asking if no. she can. No. Because at that time, you changed the rules to say we'll have, we, we can come back up again. But the motion had already it failed. It already had right? passed. I just wanted yeah. to clarify that. Uh, so so since the motion has already failed, we can't entertain all precisely right. I'll, the same motion. I'll with, I'll, I will hold off at this time and uh, come back later. Thank you. Are there any other motions you wish to make? Section two, Mr. Speaker. On section two, to delete section two. You have the same problem there. No, we didn't do section two yet. For On the first day, did we not also entertain no. a motion to? No, not section two. You, you certain? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. All Thank right, you. so Senator proposing amendment. Yes, for section two to delete section two. Okay, on that motion, is there any objection? That will restore the fullness of GCC's appropriation. Is there any objection to that motion? There being no objection, the motion carries. Any other amendments, uh, Senator Guthrie? It's none. No more? Well, see, that's what we're trying to avoid is the later. The whole idea was to try and give everybody an opportunity to move whatever it is they wanted to move and proceed apace. Mr. Chairman, may I make my motion and, and sub subsequently provide the written copy? So long as the motion is simple for the Very simple. to understand. Okay. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that 95%. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think Ben was absolutely spot on the money. If you want to change the appropriation UOG. Give us a number. I thought then can I move to recess for one minute, please? <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Thank you. Do you have any other motion to make? No, just that one on section one. And that'll be the, your last motion? Yes. Okay, rather than recess, Rory, uh, do you know how much the cut is? No, no, no. Do you know how much the cut five. is? <laughs> We're doing it now. I'm not going to recess. I'm just going to let you guys work on it. I can't because uh, we're going to finish off Judy first. No, Judy says this is her last motion. Judy, is this your last motion for, to, for restoration? Yes, okay, thank you. Senator Guthert says, I look at this, you're going to have to make the motion at several places. Uh, I, think, I think we will go on to someone else and come back to you so you can do it properly. Because as I look at this thing, 
the appropriation. Um, well, where are you going to make your, your appropriation? Section 1A or Section 1? Judy? I think you'd also have to change the Section 1 number, too. Uh, Judy, we'll just move on to somebody else work on it, okay? Um, who else would like to make uh, motions? So I think Senator Palacios, you had your hand up first, and then Senator Panglia. Senator Palacios, you recognize. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, of course, make a motion for deletion, and I, I would like to move that section 13 of page 15. Actually, that's the Office of the Attorney General, Department of Law. It doesn't matter. We can we can we can opt back and forth. On it. It's the same theory. Go ahead. Uh, that that this section be uh, deleted in its entirety. Okay. Uh, Motion is uh, in Chapter Four to uh, to delete Section Thirteen, which would have the effect of restoring the full appropriation to the AG. On that motion, is there any objection? On that objection, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is that your last motion in this area? That, that I'll, I'll follow the Okay, office. Senator Pangolinan, you're recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have, in, in Chapter 3, I'd like to add a, there's an amendment that's handed out. It has a uh, asterisk on the side, two-page amendment. An asterisk. Asterisk on the top right-hand corner. Hey, malingole. Taigui asterisk, Guinea. Yeah, there's, it's, it's not in, it's a separate amendment from the package you got, okay. so it's a new, uh, uh, stick around. Okay, it's the asterisk, or maybe not, I don't see any asterisk. No, no, it's the one with the asterisk. Oh, I see. It looks more like a Cairo, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> so. okay uh, yeah, if I may explain, Mr. Certainly, on the motion, uh, the, um, Does everybody have a copy of this thing? This uh, this uh, deletes and uh, reappropriates the money to other things, so it's a little bit complicated, guys. So yes, y'all got it. Is there anybody who doesn't have it? Is there anybody who feels any discomfort with their level of information at this particular juncture? If not, go ahead, Senator Pangolini. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the uh, the amendment uh, basically um, takes the appropriations that were made in uh, Section 2 of Public Law 150 from the Interim Transition Coordinating Committee Fund that had placed those funds into the general fund. Uh, and what we're doing is um, I would like to restore some of the cuts for the specific agencies, and I wanted to identify a funding source. I was able to, um, to get from the Department of Administration the balances of the interim transition accounts, which are the accounts listed here with those balances as of February, uh, or actually March 31st. So the total appropriation, would it would be to delete uh, A and B of, of uh, Section 2 of uh, Chapter uh, 4, Part 1 of Public Law 28150, uh, and the total balances in the accounts enumerated here is $1.4 million, 994.84. So um, rather than sending that to the general fund, I wanted to restore the appropriations made to the cuts and appropriate directly f from these funds to the uh, following agencies. The medical examiner in the amount of 10214 the Department of Revenue and Taxation, in the amount of 207,405. Now we just passed the Department of Law. Uh, um, the Department of Law would be for 180,045. The Public Defender Service Corporation in the amount of 7885. These would uh, restore those cuts that were identified. So we left the cuts in the previous section and then appropriated from this funding source to bring them back up to their original section. And then Section B of the uh, amendment would appropriate 
$460,000 to the Guam Retirement Fund, uh, and this would fund the increase in the contribution level for the entire fiscal year for all executive line agencies on the employer contribution for 22, from 22.65 to 22.94. This is the contribution level set by the actual rate of the retirement fund, and this will allow individuals who are willing, to, who are ready to retire, and they are, cannot retire because the retirement fund is um, calculating the, the due amount from the general fund line agencies at 22.9, and the line agencies are paying at 22.64. If we pass this amendment, we, we will be able to have approximately $900,000 in salaries re, uh, re deleted from the, from the uh, general fund for the departments and agencies uh, because these individuals can retire. In addition, we all saw the um, uh, problem with the, uh, the widow whose husband passed away and she will not be given her retirement uh, pension for a survivor benefit because of exactly this, amount, this uh, problem of the general fund is behind in that difference uh, of 22.65 and 22.94. From the retirement fund, the uh, total amount needed to cover for the entire fiscal year for all the executive line agencies uh, is $460,000. And then the third part of the amendment is um, we to appropriate uh, $270,000 to Tamuning Elementary Schools, Southern High Schools, and all other schools as appropriate for the repair of and replacement of air conditioning units. We know that uh, Tamuning Elementary is, is, you know, they have to suspend DEET programs because of uh, air conditioning problems. We, have, we see the banner in terms of how many days they're without air conditioning. The um, uh, Southern High is, uh, I think, in its 103rd day. Uh, so this would uh, provide $270,000 to them. And then the fourth part is the restoration of the deletion of the cut in the Guam Memorial Hospital Authority Pharmaceuticals Fund uh, that was cut to the tune of $250,000, 570 and this would restore that so that they can continue to have the full funding for the, uh, the fund that this body appropriated to them for pharmaceuticals. So uh, this would, again, uh, identify a specific funding source other than the general fund that's not included uh, to these agencies to fund the cuts and for these other programs identified in B, C, and D. Thank you much, Senator Pangolin. On the Pangolin Amendment, uh, Senator uh, Speaker Mark Forbes. I think the amendment is uh, most uh, salutary. Uh, however, as, uh, as the mover himself noted, we have already restored uh, the cut to the Department of Law to the Attorney General's office. And um, consequently, if we were to pass it in its current form, we'd actually be increasing their appropriation by the, the amount of 180000 45. Um, so I'd like to move to amend Senator Pangolin's amendment as follows. Um, two parts, both of them very simple. One would be to strike item three um, in that list of uh, four items where it says Department of Law 180,045. I'd like to strike that. And then I'd like to move to amend uh, the number in um, C. C. Subsection C, where it appropriates $270,876 for air conditioning replacement and repair. I'd like to amend that number, $270,876, okay. to a new number, $450,421. Okay, so there's two parts to the amendment by, uh, to the amendment by Sen uh, Speaker Forbes. That, and the, the, the idea there is very simply that we sure. don't need to restore what we've already restored. Yeah. And I think... Uh, a most appropriate use for the additional $180,000 would be to throw it in the air conditioning repair okay. fund because, as uh, Senator Wampat is fully aware, uh, in, in those schools that we have visited thus far mm -hmm. that we hope to continue with as soon as we're mm -hmm. done with this particular bill, uh, there are other air conditioners besides yeah. Southern High and Timooning that need repair. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on the first part of the amendment, uh, the, uh, the amendment to the amendment to delete uh, item number three, Department of Law 180. 
1,045. No objection. Okay. The amendment, to amend, amendment carries to the second, the second portion, which basically takes the balance and places it into the C, which grant a grand total of what is it again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the second portion, if there's no amendment, I mean, if there's no objection. Okay. No objection to the. So the amendment to the amendment carries on the amendment uh, as amended, uh, Senator Panglinen. I'd like to. Senator Calvo, you're recognized. I always recognize you, Senator Calvo. <laughs> thank Wherever you. I see you, I recognize you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Speaker. Uh, this is the one amendment, in my opinion, that makes some sense in, in this wonderland that we're in right now in, uh, through the looking glass of, of Bill Number 74. Obviously, the environment has completely changed in deappropriations, uh, but we're dealing with Bill 74. Obviously, as, as mentioned by the sen minority senator, based on, on current appropriations, uh, on Bill 74 and revenue, we are obviously aware of the structural imbalance of this budget. Uh, at least with this particular provision, uh, what, what, what occurred was there was a balancing act. There was appropriations that the administration had originally uh, planned for use for the governor and executive branch uh, that had not been accounted for. Uh, there's been a change and now those numbers uh, and those balances are going into uh, uh, particular sections as mentioned earlier that in the opinion of this legislative body are of priority. What it, didn't do, what it did do was set priorities. What it didn't do was increase the structural and, and the uh, deficit and the imbalance that we have now in this current budget. Uh, I want to thank the senator from Barragata for it, and I'm in support of it. Unfortunately, uh, for all, I, I was not present for some of the earlier amendments. I'm hoping that my colleagues will understand I, I'm hoping that my colleagues will understand that for every amendment that is made to restore an appropriation, it just, uh, uh, how would you say, stretches out the imbalance. And But with that, I'm in favor of this particular amendment. On the motion, as amended, is there any objection? Will that objection <laughs> amendment carry? Senator Penglin, do you have any further amendments? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I... It's in the uh, packet on, uh, it's an amendment to, um, uh, once again, amend Public Law 28150, Chapter 4, Part 1, Section 2. And, um, and um, it would then to Section 2, add a Section D, which would amend Section C of 21150. Uh, in Section C of 2150. I, I, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt, but yet again, the chairman does not have a copy of the amendment. Could the clerk or somebody show me where this is? I don't know. This is just a pile of paper. I don't, I don't see it. Here. I don't. I don't have anything stapled together. Yeah, well, it's very nice, but I need a copy. Is it back there? Okay. Okie dokie. Where are we? Okay, no, back again. Okay. Unless it's at the very back then. Okay, it's at the very back. Okay, proceed, Senator Pangolino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, in the original Bill 150, the uh, Dorman account appropriation uh, was um, pegged at three million seven hundred and ten thousand five hundred seven, and um, I just wanted to amend that section to reflect the uh, uh, amount that was actually taken out of the Dorman accounts, so that we can have a structural balance, as the good chair uh, says, with regards to uh, our revenues. The amount that was actually swept out of the dormant accounts uh, by the Department of Administration upon passage of this was only 1,666,536. So in order to make sure that we, um, 
we have a real number for our revenues, we need to reduce that 3.7 7 million to the actual amount that was actually taken out. Okay, on that motion, without objection. Motion carries. Do you have any further amendments, Senator Pangolino? Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the uh, amendment I have would be um, on section 20 of um, chapter, part two, chapter four of public law 28150. Um, this section appropriated the amount of um, $727,385 to the, from the tourist attraction fund to the Guam Visitors Bureau to fund the Mayor's Council of Guam's island-wide beautification project. Now we saw that the mayors came in here and said that really what they do in their operations is contribute to this account and they haven't been able to spend this amount and none of this amount have been spent due to the requirement, one of them is the requirement that GVB has to authorize the, uh, the, um, the release, plus they really desperately needed actual fund for their operations, which was cut in the, form, in the other section of Bill uh, 7074. So what this uh, amendment does is uh, it retains the, the total appropriation uh, and, appropriate and breaks it down into two different appropriation uh, amounts. 491,000 would uh, now be appropriated for the beautification project and then it would, re, uh, we would strike the requirement that the GVB shall not release the amounts for this appropriation to the Mayor's Council until project plans are reviewed and approved by the Guam Council, by the Council and GVB Board, and the uh, expenditure of $35,000 for a person at GVB to oversee the mayors. So that appropriation is retained for the beautification project. And then um, the balance of the appropriation between the 491 and the original amount of 727 is then uh, appropriated to the Mayor's Council to fund the cuts that were uh, instituted in the other section of the bill, 188,903 to their operations fund, 37,500 to their uh, village maintenance beautification fund, and $9,000 to the Mayor's Council uh, for uh, alcohol and so, uh, regulations, underage drinking programs, traffic safety programs, et cetera. So it does not increase the total appropriation at all. Okay. On that motion, any objections? What objection? You have no, okay, you wish to discuss the motion? Well, only Senator only Wombat, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I, I definitely support this. Um, my concern now, I know, because we have all these breakdowns and separate amounts for this, uh, do, is there any mechanism in, uh, in which there would be some reporting of the expenditures for these? Because I'm looking at the listing of uh, all the parks and that I'm hoping that uh, it won't just be one would be, you know, that most of it would go to one park and not the others, that all those be considered. So when they send a, you know, a list of the report of what was done and which places uh, the monies were expended on, uh, for the parks and, and also for the programs. I really would like to know like, what type of programs are actually going to be done to uh, uh, combat or mitigate some of these uh, problems that we're experiencing, our children are going through. Well, I, uh, is I, it, I don't know if the author really is in a position to answer the fullness. Right, because since yeah. I was not here for yeah. the... Uh, I don't it, think any of us is in a position to answer your question, Senator Wampad, so in the fullness. Could, maybe put an amendment in is to uh, ask them that they then submit uh, a report of their expenditures that's all to the legislature? Uh, why don't you make that motion? Yeah, okay. th that's not a, I have no objection to. Okay, so I'll prepare it, thank you. No, why don't you make the motion now? Just oh, say it verbally okay. clearly so the clerk can get it down. Um, that the mayor's council. It's a reporting Yes, that the mayor's council then shall report to uh, the Guam legislature uh, of said expenditures, and that's it. Where do you want that to be? Uh, r maybe D E. We make a uh, subsection E. Okay, uh, just for the clerk's benefit, we are adding uh, a subsection E that is going to say that the mayor's council shall report <laughs> on all expenditures subject to this appropriation to the Guam legislature. How's that? Yes, thank you, Mr. You got Chairman. That clerk?
new subsection E that says the mayor's council shall report on all expenditures made subject to this appropriation to the legislature. Or shall report to the legislature on all expenditures made subject to this appropriation. How's that? Does the clerk have it? Is that a yes? Okay, great. Uh, on uh, Senator Wampet's amendment to the amendment, is there any objection? Without objection, that amendment to the amendment carries. On the main amendment, Senator Calvo. Again, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair. And this particular amendment, again, what it at least shows is some fiscal responsibility because uh, obviously earlier on in the, in, the, in the session, we saw some of the issues in regards to the mayors and obviously there were appropriations, but because of, um, of a bureaucracy and, and certain requirements, uh, they weren't getting their appropriations. So this does not create, does not stretch the imbalance. But I'm gonna have to, again, I'm sorry I missed the, the, the last few amendments. I'm going to have to state my case every single time. But but Senator I know I'm. Please allow me to complete my statement, and then I'm I'm just stating I'm I'm for this amendment because it doesn't cause structural. I don't balance. have an objection. I'm and just I pointing yeah. out, Senator Calvo, that you've informed the chair mm -hmm. that in every single circumstance you intend to speak outside the subject matter yeah. of the motion. Well, so I just have to warn you. Okay. That Thank you very I will much. Let you do this. I can't. Allow people to constantly thank you speak very much. outside the subject matter. Then a point of okay. Thank you very much no for problem. your for your explanation, Mr. Chair. No problem. Uh, again, this body is reinstating everything like everything is hunky dory, and things aren't very hunky dory. So again, at least with this particular amendment, it does not stretch the imbalance even further. So I have no problem with this particular well. amendment. Okay. No problem. Uh, on the motion, without objection, the motion carries. Senator Pangolinan, have you concluded your amendments? I've concluded my amendments on these sections. Right. Uh, other parts of the bill, I, I'll have a... Additional. So on three and four, you're done. Is there anybody else that has any motions on three and four other than Senator Guthrits? No one else has any? Okay, Senator Guthrits, your final. Thank you for your patience, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Chairman, my motion is as follows. Do we have it in writing? Yes. Do I have it in writing? I believe so. D has the clerk, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, has the Sergeant Arms provided Did me with a copy, a copy of Senator Guthert's uh, amendment? Did you give him a copy? How about him? I see v VC Pangolina amendments aplenty. I do not see a new Guthert's amendment that has been handed to me. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is the amendment, Mr. Chairman. Amend Section 1 and Section 1A, Appropriations to the University of Guam of Chapter 3 of Bill 74, as substituted by the Committee of the Whole, to read Section 1. Appropriations to the University of Guam. The amounts in the subsections below, 32 million... $848,298 are from the following funds and for the following purposes to the University of Guam for fiscal year 2007. Section 8. General fund appropriation for operations, the sum of $24,501,523 is appropriated from the general fund to the University of Guam for its operations in fiscal year 2007. The impact of this amendment, Mr. Chairman, is that the university would lose some monies, uh, approximately $115,000. That would be the effect of this uh, Okay. Just to be clear, amendment. the amendment uh, does reduce the appropriations to the university. It just does not reduce them to the same extent that the original Correct. bill did. So it is Correct. being reduced from 32963722 uh, uh, excuse me. $32,963,722 is being reduced to $32,848,298. And then in the, um, in the section dealing with general fund appropriations, uh, there's also a, a proportionate uh, reduction. On that motion, does anybody wishes to discuss the motion? Senator Calvo, you recognize. 
Thank you very much once again, Mr. Chair. Again, I, it appears that we all are looking, as Alice looked through the looking glass. Uh, in one hand, we know there is disparity on revenues coming in and appropriations. And let me state for the record, uh, since I am the Chairman of Finance and Taxation, and in the last two budget laws that I presided over, the greatest increases have been on education, health, and public safety. And with that is my belief also, and, and again, these, these have been passed into law by, by both the 29th and the 28th Guam legislature. Uh, a belief that we must focus on the priorities. And once again, though I will object to this amendment, does not change my belief that education is a top priority. But I'm not gonna look at this budget as Alice through the looking glass. There is an imbalance and there is current, there is currently a spending level above revenues projected to come into this government. And if you can recall, in some of the earlier sessions, or days in this session, there were some agencies that were unhappy of the cuts, but understood the scenario and the situation of this current government and its finances, and grudgingly accepted the cuts, and yet we've restored those appropriations in full, even with these agencies saying they could live with the cuts because they understand the financial situation of the government of Guam. And it's unfortunate because we all know everyone's been doing their abacus or calculator, there's an imbalance in the force. <laughs> but um, with this imbalance, and unlike the past, the last two amendments, at least those last two amendments did not grow the imbalance. This once again is an amendment to restore that does not find a way, and unless of course there's gonna be recommendations by the movers of these amendments to find alternative funding sources, which I have not heard one alternative yet. Not in that section yet, Senator. Uh, well, well it would be, uh, please let me continue, Mr. Speaker. Senator Cowell. Me, and, and I, I'm just going to state, make a statement. And with that, I'm I, again, I am I am uh, objecting to this, not because it is not a priority, because it is a priority, but because again, uh, it is an amendment that, based on it at face value, uh, it creates a greater structural imbalance. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Prom. I just want to point out, for the record that all members of this body have been advised that any motions to increase revenues or do anything like that would be entertained in the section that is upcoming. Everybody's aware of that, so I presume that's the reason why no one has made such a motion at this time. Uh, on the motion by Senator Guthert's, is there any objection? Okay. Show of hands, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. This is Judy's. Motion fails. I, I believe we have exhausted all the motions in this uh, chapters three and four. We're done, right? No one else has any motions? No, 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 no. I'm just talking about these motions to restore. Going once, going twice. I'm actually looking for a motion, but I'll go ahead with a question. It's, it's an important question, because I am confused. You know, we have, we, we, we got a hint that there's a 5% automatic deappropriation, okay? No, you and don't I, have I, it. I, go ahead, proceed. Okay. Now, if we go back to restore all the numbers, in effect, I believe we're nullifying those 5% no, deappropriations. All right, I'm gonna answer this once, and only once and I am acting actually in a manner I should not be acting because we are in a particular section of this budget and we should get through it. 
And if we constantly devolve into side discussions, we're not going to make much progress. But I will answer the question once, and just once. A, uh, the automatic provisions for repeal are automatic. They have nothing to do with any, the legislature need not take any action. They simply exist. To the extent that budgets are going to be modified by the Bureau of Budget Management and Research in accordance with this public law for the quarter uh, that is immediately passed, they could be further adjusted if the same departments and agencies fail to meet their obligations to provide reporting requirements in the subsequent quarter. We can't anticipate the failure of these departments and agencies to meet with the obligations that are laid out in law. They're two separate activities. We're setting, however this body determines to do it, budget levels and appropriation levels for these departments. Whether or not agencies comply with the law and fulfill their reporting requirements is something that is simply going to occur without our effort. If you understand Senator Shizaki, we can't anticipate and, and incorporate into these numbers the potential failure of these departments and agencies to meet the obligations in the next quarter or if the, if the provisions survive in the, in the 2008 budget and the quarters thereafter. So what makes sense, Senator Shizaki, is for us to set whatever it is we're going to set, establish these levels at and then allow the chips to fall where they may. When you were out of the room, Senator Shizaki, the administration told us that what they would be doing is by Monday coming back and asking us uh, through some kind of presentation perhaps to forgive some departments this 5% cut. So we await, uh, we await their report, and if in fact they make such a report, and if in fact such report uh, compels a member of this body to move in such a fashion, to provide some degree of forgiveness to one, two, three, five, or any number of departments, then it is within the power of the body to do so if it chooses to. It is not incumbent upon us if we, didn't take, if we don't take any action then the law as is written will go into place as soon as BBMR promulgates those cuts. So we can't stop budgeting because it's possible that down the road, or either immediately and further down the road, these departments might have to face some consequences for not complying with the uh, law. Now, I, I really don't want to get into a side discussion here. Uh, we're, we're, we're at the end of this chapter. So if, if you have a question you want to ask me, since there are no more motions to make in this chapter. No, I, that, I wanted to make a motion to, to recess until... Unnecessary. I'll, I'll, no, make, no, I'm just, I'll I'm do it sui sponte. Big uh, pardon? I said I'll do it sui sponte. It's after five. That's why I'm asking if there are any other further motions. Oh, so you're going to go uh, yeah. recess. Well, thank you very much. No problem, Senator Shimizu. Are there any further motions uh, that it would be appropriate to the time we are in in this bill? There are none. Uh, for, if that's the case, then the legislature will recess until 9 a.m. Monday morning, at which time, at which time, we will uh, hear uh, the report from uh, the administration about uh, what it is they wish to do with respect to this 5% cuts, and we will be in miscellaneous, I believe, will we not? Well, what's the next one? Oh, authorization for a line of credit. All right, we'll be in Chapter 5. You know what? It simply occurs to me that the way this bill is constructed is odd. Wouldn't it make more sense for us to do Chapter 6 before we did Chapter 5? Is there a motion on the floor that someone would like to make that we entertain Chapter Mr. 6 before we entertain Chapter 5? Chairman, I think it'd be... Mr. Chairman, I think it'd be more appropriate that we entertain Chapter 1 before we determine anything else. I think Chapter One's already been entertained, Senator Rispicio. No, I think we should need to, to uh, determine the revenue. Uh, Senator Rispicio, we are past we Chapter One. The only question before us is: Shall we deal with Chapter Five first or Chapter Six first? But you well, were entertaining any suggestions on how this? No, I was entertaining a specific suggestion about whether to deal with Chapter Five or Chapter Six first. Senator Cabo? Actually, that makes a lot of sense to deal with the miscellaneous provision. You know so what? Too. If you do the miscellaneous, it may have an impact on, on revenue. what should, exactly. on revenues. It may have impact so, on all kinds of things. So let's. That's uh, my. Is there a motion? motion. There's a motion. All right, Senator Calvo is making a motion that we entertain Chapter 6 before Chapter 5. Is there any objection? Okay, without objection, we will be at Chapter 6 come Monday at 9 o'clock. The legislature is in recess. <laughs>